In this lesson, we'll look at when to use open components versus closed components. These are two different strategies for building components in Webflow, and they each have their strengths. With open components, we use component slots where we can add and remove however many items we'd like, and we can select an element directly and we'll see only the props associated with that element. Whereas with closed components, all the elements are stored inside the component itself, and we manage those elements using props. So I can hide and show the paragraph from this entire section, as opposed to just clicking on the paragraph directly and hiding it from there. So the difference comes in once we start to reuse these components. If we have multiple of these hero sections throughout different pages of our site, and we click into this component and make a structural change, like moving the paragraph above the heading. Notice how that updated across every instance of this hero main component used throughout the site. Whereas if we were to do the same thing with kind of an open component and we make a structural change here, it's only going to affect this one instance, not other instances of the component. So the open components give us more flexibility, whereas closed components give us more design consistency. So if we were to click into this and make a change like the font size, for instance, or anything that's not connected to a prop on the whole section, that'll update across every instance of that closed component site-wide. Now, also with open components, since it's all built with slots, we can't really have regular divs inside there. We can't just drop in a div and start styling it with custom classes in the style panel. So it kind of causes us to make each element its own component. So like this card, for instance, to be able to apply these custom styles to it, I had to turn that card into a component. And this makes things more reusable to where we're not just creating a lot of one-off styles, but each element we create can now be reused across multiple sections. So it does widen the strategy a little bit. Whereas with these closed components, if we open it up, they're basically mostly built with regular divs. So here we have a hero main uh, section and then the container and then the layout div. So we can use the style panel to freely kind of style these elements. And this gives us a lot more style control. So for more complex sections, I typically find myself going this way. Whereas with more simple sections, I try to build it as much as possible with these reusable building blocks. So we're not adding a ton of extra styles to our site when we can just reuse elements that were already created. So that's the balance to walk between those two. And we can always turn a open component like this into a closed component. If I drag it outside of the page slot, I can wrap it in a div and select that div and go ahead and turn that into my CTA section. So I'll make that a component here and create. And now because this uh, is still open building blocks inside of this component, these generic little component elements, but because it's wrapped in this div that's closed off, now any structural changes I make here are going to affect every instance of that CTA section. So we get a bit more consistency there. Now, if I go into the section here, I'll go ahead and move this content wrapper outside of the grid. With this content wrapper, it has a variant for alignment here, and that alignment is also affecting the flex alignment on this other child uh, button wrapper component. In this button wrapper component, I can override things with classes. So like if I want a larger margin top here, I can just add a class. If I want more gap between the elements, again, just add a class to space them apart. So we can still stretch things pretty far where we're not too locked in style-wise, but it's not as free as just having the style panel here to freely apply any style you'd like. You kind of have to have classes or variants uh, to manage styles with this route. Now here on this grid, I'll go ahead, let's duplicate this image a couple times. And so for this grid here, um, it's an auto fit grid by default. Let's go ahead and clear some of this. So with this auto fit grid, it's just gonna automatically wrap, in this case, before the columns get smaller than 28 rim. So before each column gets smaller than that 28 rim, they're gonna stack under each other somewhere here. And if we want them to stack maybe a little bit later, I could try something like 26 rim, and then they'll stay side by side for longer, and then they'll, they'll wrap somewhere down here. So this is the minimum width for those columns. And if we have kind of a larger minimum width, like, or a smaller one, let's say we never want the columns to get smaller than six rim. Now we can fit a lot more of these cards before it has to wrap. 
but still with that minimum width, we might want to limit our column count to never show more than four. Um, so we can do that here by setting our max column count. And if we have less items here, it's going to stretch those items out to fill in that space. But if we switch our grid type to be auto fill, then we get this empty space here. It fills in the grid with the empty space when we have less items there. Um, so we can switch our grid type there as well. Um, so what we might want to do, because this is a closed off component here, we can't really add or remove items uh, to each instance of this CTA section. They're all going to have to have three items or however many we've set here. Now to fix that, we can just go into the grid here and we'll delete the items out of it temporarily. And we'll go ahead and just drop in a slot. And this is a slot for the entire sort of CTA section here. Now this slot is just occupying one column within the grid, but we can give it a display of contents. And that's gonna almost like turn this element to display none, but still show the children inside it. So it kind of like if they, we have children in here, puts them like they're direct children of the main grid. It, it acts kind of like that by just going giving display contents here under custom properties. So by applying that to our slot here, now if we drag or drop some like elements into this, it's just like they were inside the main grid. So we have a closed component, but we still get a bit of flexibility of adding, removing items uh, from this uh, closed component. And if we go into this component and we make a change to, let's say this grid, like we give it a gap row of something like um, six, to put more row gap between them. Now that change we made is going to apply across each instance of the CTA component. So we kind of get the best of both worlds there. Now, whenever we have this slot here, I like to name it based on the card I want the client to drop in. So in this case, in the CTA, I want them to use a card primary component. So I just open the section CTA, I double click on the slot here, and I call this card primary. And that way, when the client adds kind of like a section CTA to the page, uh, they'll know exactly what to search here. Just search for a card primary and add that in, and they'll know exactly what's supposed to go into this component. Let's go ahead and select that grid and give it some margin top. While we're at it, we'll go margin top eight, and that should just space it apart from the other elements. So that's kind of how we can turn a open component into a closed component. Now to build a closed component from the start without using all these extra uh, building blocks inside by just using plain divs instead, there's a couple ways we can do that. One of them is to just start with an actual section element. And I'm adding this outside the page slot for now and give it a custom class. We might call this something like our blog header wrap. And inside of that, I might go ahead and add in some spacer divs. I use these spacer divs so I can control top and bottom padding on the section um, freely. And then inside of, or in between those two spacer divs, I'll call this blog header contain. And I'll give that a utility class of container so it has its max width. And on the section, I'll give it a utility of view section so it has the position relative and some of the styles we need. Um, but this, instead of using the uh, generic section element, gives us the freedom to just style things using the style panel. So whether that's giving this section a min height, whether that's going to this container here and setting it to not shrink or grow, um, like so, that just gives us a little bit more flexibility to use the style panel as we please and maybe apply some styles that we don't have utilities for. And within this um, section, we can always at any point switch over to using the, um, the building blocks like the grid, like the uh, content wrapper, like maybe an image element. Um, so we can mix and match. We can use regular sort of plain devs and building block components either way inside of this section. And at any point, we just turn this section into a component. So I'll call this something like section blog header. And now I have this closed component that I've kind of created from scratch. Now, the thing about this here is I would have to link up props because none of the props are connected. So if I want the client to be able to control like the top padding, I would have to link that up to a prop. Uh, the bottom padding, if I want them to be able to control the theme, I would have to manually create variants for like a dark theme and things like that. So that is kind of a bit tedious to set up, which is why I have this section custom 
where we can just duplicate this element and all the props will already be set for us. So if I duplicate this, and I call this something like my CTA secondary component, and we go ahead and we'll call it section CTA secondary, so we can search that, and let's create. So now if I go ahead and drop in this section uh, CTA secondary, which is right here, now we have all of the props already set for us, things like the heading text, things like the section top and bottom padding, uh, things like the color theme of the section, all that's set for us. And if I open this CTA secondary, um, it's just using this generic sort of section uh, class on all of these elements, but we can turn that into a, a custom class so that we're not affecting other instances of this section wrap. So the section wrap class, for instance, on each variant, we're applying the correct sort of theme to that variant, like so. Um, but if we go ahead and duplicate this class and we call it something like CTA secondary wrap, now we'll notice that all those variants are still attached. They're coming from the CTA secondary wrap class. So we didn't have to manually create them. And we can make style changes here that are only gonna affect this CTA secondary. It's not gonna affect other sections throughout the site. And then we just follow that process for each kind of element here. So I can call it CTA secondary uh, and we'll call that contain. And then I might have duplicate this one, CTA secondary um, kind of layout. And so once we have that set, we can really just start to apply any changes we want here. And the advantage is we didn't have to recreate all our props from scratch. If there's things like that we don't need, like this heading, we just delete it. Um, and then we go over to the section and remove the props we're not using, like heading, for instance. We have this button to prop for visibility, text, and link. But if we actually just, in this instance, uh, might want to use kind of like a text link instead, um, we can go ahead and drop in that text link component. And then we can connect its visibility to the button to visibility, text to button to text, and link to button to link. And then we just delete the secondary button we head over to the props and we can go ahead and just rename this button to to be something like text link. And just that little bit allowed us to not have to recreate all of the props for this um, from scratch. We just switch the props over to this component instead. So that's also a huge advantage to using uh, closed components like this is that if the client makes a change here um, and let's say they say get started, and they have this pointing to a certain page and they have all of their content in here. And then later we decide to make a design change where we actually want to use a different style here. Um, with the open component, what the client would have to do is delete this element and add a regular element in its place and then start switching out the content in the link. But with this closed component, since all the uh, content is saved on props on the entire section, all we had to do is drop in a, a different element like maybe we'll go this button main, and then we can just start connecting it to all the same uh, styles and content. So we're not having to re-input that content, we just switch it out from one component to the other, and that really helps with the maintenance of the site. So as a general rule of thumb, if a section's gonna be used more than once, I like to turn it into a closed component so we get that consistency. If it's just gonna be a fast one-off uh, sort of instance, we can build it with the generic uh, building blocks instead. Now with a closed component, if we need to change something later, like instead of using this image component, we might need to use a true image element so we get a bit more of the style panel and more style control. That's a totally easy switch to make because we're using a closed component. So we just move the content from the, um, basically from the component element to the static element and we didn't have to re-upload any kind of content there. Now we can take things pretty far with just the basic building blocks. And if you look at the example components page in Lumos, nearly all of these, or actually all of these are set with the uh, generic uh, components. And if I hold my option key here, you can see they're all built from the basic section component. They're just given a custom label. So that way we can uh, click to a certain one to know which uh, section this is. But these are all just open components. And you'll notice even with this, uh, sort of layout here. This is just the basic grid component, but I've cleared out the settings from it. And instead I've given it a U grid above. We could add a breakout grid or any kind of grid uh, we wanna add to this. And here I can update the column count on that grid. 
uh, like so. I'll leave it at 12 columns. And then on this content wrapper here, uh, I'm going ahead and set this to uh, span five columns. And then the image here, I've gone ahead and set it to span seven columns. And that height fool is making it stretch out past its aspect ratio, at least here. Um, so it's the same height as the content. Um, so we can really just control a lot with this. In this case, it's going to wrap uh, somewhere around here. Um, but we can control the point at which it wraps. So on the whole section for the uh, container here, we're using threshold medium. If we switch that over to threshold small instead, for instance, then they're going to stay side by side for much longer. Um, and then they'll eventually wrap somewhere down here. So we can control the point where they wrap from here. Um, there's a lot we can set just with the basic building blocks without having to venture too far into custom classes on every element. So that's a high level overview of when to use um, the closed components, when to use the open components, and how you can even combine them to get the best of both worlds in some situations.